the great new work of the Balboas translated the elements of theology and take a look at what he did with the 35th. All right? Okay. Sure. Can we have a two minute break for me to change the film? Yeah, yeah, okay, take a break. I'd like your notes on the time in. Did you talk? Did you talk it over with Barbara yet? Did you talk it over with Barbara? I have not. What is he going to talk over? Barbara. He owes you a cup of coffee. He does. What is that for? He'll tell you. What is that for? An email. Oh, an email that I sent him? No, no. And he know that he sent you? That he and should, he know that he sent you? That he should, <laughs> that he should share with you. Oh, really? Okay. I had a more of an inspiration. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. Everybody take a few minutes out on this one. This one was chiseled into stone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it had a date on the bottom, 500 BC, so you know it's authentic. that is converted has, has hastens in every way to be conjoined and aspires after communion, fellowship, and also aspires after being bound together in union with self. But likeness binds together every being, just as the unlikeness separates and disjoints Therefore, if the conversion is a certain communion and contact, whereas every communion and every contact are attained through likeness, accordingly then, every conversion will be brought to completion through likeness. Interesting. Okay. Wait, so what number was that? Are we doing 32? 32, right? One minor problem. <laughs> I thought you said 34. 35. 35. Oh, jeez. Uh, sorry. Hold it. I was thinking that I was oh, No, no, that's a beautiful one. To try and save here. Uh, Barbara? What? I'm sorry, what? Would you read 35? Yeah. Sure. Well, that's a lot. Uh, all that is caused abides in self, it's proceeds from self, and reverts to the cause of self. For if all solely abided, then all would not differ from the cause. Sorry. For if all... Yeah, that would be the way I felt after somebody cut a sentence off. Especially mm. such a good one. <laughs> For if all solely abided, then all would not differ from the cause. 
from the cause with, by being without any distinction. For progression is, at the same time, a distinction. But if all solely proceeds, then all would be unconjoined and unsympathetic to self by having no communion, no communication with the cause in any way whatsoever. But if all solely reverts or converts, how can that which does not possess the usia from self make its conversion according to usia that is foreign to all? But if all were to abide and proceed, but would not revert or convert or turn back, then how will there be a natural desire for one and all, for well-being and the good, and its restoration to its generative cause? But if all were to proceed and be converted, but were not to abide, then by being apart from the cause, how will all hasten to be conjoined with self, if all were to be unconjoined prior to its separation? For if all had been conjoined, then it would have altogether abided in that. But if all were to abide and be converted but would not proceed, then how can that which is not separated be able to revert? For all that turns back resembles that which is being restored into that from which it was divided through usia. Thus it is necessary that all must either only abide, or only revert, or only proceed, or that the extremes must be bound to each other, or that the middle be conjoined to each of the extremes, or that all will be conjoined together. Thus it remains that all must abide in the cause, proceed from self, and revert to self. Beautiful. Good job, Juan and Maria. What? You like cocoa? What just happened? Really? Interesting thought. Friday night, Proclus 35, one double translation. I forgot to put my recorder on. This is an interesting coffee company, though, because you get to order, like, you order from different companies, and they all go through, through a server. This is the same one I belong to, you know, through some kind of a agency. So you go, okay, I want organic, I want fair trade, I want, you know, and then they, and, and you can say I want light roast, not dark roast, or I want this or that. But still, $40 a month? I went, they don't make it crude when sign up. So after I got two bags, I said, enough. Back to work. Back to self. Mm.
You know, all modern thought begins with the denial of the idea of cause. Don't look for causes. Look for correlations between things. Don't go for causes. All Western European thought starts with that premise. Give up any concern for causes. Rather, look for correlations between things. That's as far as you can go. That's the limit of intellectual concern. This is what they're against. This is what they're against. Now, of course, he argues negatively to show the point, which is the uh, argument negative. But let's put that aside and look at it positively. This is the way he reasons from this. This is the model. So beautiful. For if all entirely abided, then all would not differ from the cause by being without any distinction. For pro progression is at the same time a distinction. But if all solely proceeds, then all would be in an unconjoined and unsympathetic to the self. By having no commonness or communication with its cause in any way whatsoever. But if all solely reverts, or converts, then all would be unconjoined and to the self by having no com communication with the cause in any way whatsoever. But if all solely reverts and converts, how can that which does not possess the, the osea, the turning upon itself, from the self make its conversion according to Usia that is foreign to all. But if all were to abide and proceed, but would not revert or convert and turn back, then how will there still be a natural desire for one and all for the well-being and the good and its restoration to its generative cause? Hey. Hey. Uh, what does it take to see this? What do you have to do to see this? Louder? Look to the cause. Yeah. You have to keep in mind the unity that he's trying to prove while he goes through each of the abstraction methods. You have to keep the initial statement in your mind. Yeah. You need, a, you need a model. More. You need a model. We need, need a, a model. You need a model, yeah. Here's a model. Is this a model? Yeah. How important, obviously, how important is the idea of self? <whistles> For all that is caused, right? from the self. And, or, and it then therefore proceeds from the self and reverts back to the self. Hey, three emotions. Right? Two different realms, all that's caused in the self. Between those, 
for emotions. So all that is caused by, it's caused by the self. Uh, it proceeds from the self, reverts back to it. Now, um, notice he does something different now. He's now going to reflect. This is where he has his fun. So he's going to take this one, this one idea, and he's going to play with it. All right, do you see it in the original statement? All right. Now he goes back to it. For all that turns back, see, reverts back to its cause, the self. For all that turns back resembles that which is restored into that from which it was divided through Usia. Right? Right? That's Usia. All of this is Usia. Right? Reverse upon itself, sees itself, knows itself. Therefore, it has to have some power. Right? It has to therefore have an end. completion, and it has to be continuous. Therefore, it's an eternal turning upon itself, from itself, with a power that then ends in a discovery of the nature of the intelligible. That's all through Utsia. That's what the word means. Thus, it is necessary that all must either only abide, or only revert, or only proceed, or that the extremes must be bound to each other. Oh, hmm, very curious notion, right? Thus it is necessary that all must either only abide, or only revert, not only proceed, or that the extremes must be bound to each other, or that the middle be conjoined to each of the extremes, or that all be conjoined together. So let's just take these are the possibilities. Thus it remains that all must abide in the cause, proceed from the self, revert to the self, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> Please. I'm having a little bit of trouble, but maybe not, with the sentence before the conclusion. Yes, please. He says, thus it is necessary that all must either only abide, he disproved that. Yes. Or only reserve, he disproved that. Right. Are only proceed, he disproved that. Right. But the extremes, the abiding, the proceeding, he disproved that. Put the middle next to the extremes, either one, he disproved both of those. So the only thing you can say that's positive about that whole sentence is that all are conjoined together. That goes back to the original statement. Okay, I get it. So that's how he's thinking. So goes back to the original statement. And then he, then he restates the original statement in a nice way. Thus it, re, thus it remains that all must abide in the cause, proceed from the self, and revert to the self. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he also says, and he's, he's making a point that you, you can't just abide, you can't just proceed, and you can't just the cause that this actual dynamic has to take place. And it's going to be to see it that it does that. And so. that brings together the unity. And that brings together the very idea of self. And or see it. And see yeah, it. Right, 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 quite right, right. true. So I offer next time the Bob uh, 
Juan comes, we buy him a cup of coffee. At least. Let's be extravagant. <laughs> huh? Get him a cappuccino. Yeah. Six packs. Six packs. Yeah, very lovely. Um, Pierre, this one's like the. This proposition is really the summary of like the nine that come before it. So to understand it, you kind of really got to go back to number twenty-six. It goes back to thirty-four. Oh, 26. And 26. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. You like 26? Yeah. I mean, Let's I think go there. It's the other side of it. So. Okay, everybody, take a moment out. 26. Closing. What's the beginning of it? I like the fact that the elements of theology are finally in color. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Can you pull out one for a thing? Thank you. Okay, who needs more time? Okay. About the nature of cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what is cost you, and how is cost? Can you take us through it? Go ahead. Sure. And I was really going to, in one sense, focus on just the beginning parts because it establishes what is a cause and how, how does it cause other things and what is its nature and then what is caused and how it's caused through likeness and how it reverts. So. Great. Okay. okay. 24. <laughs> 27? 26. 26. Okay, so every cause that is productive of others while abiding self by itself produces those natures subsequent to oh, self. Pardon, pardon. Slower. Every cause that is productive of others while abiding self by itself produces those natures subsequent to self and those that are successive. I'm, I'm rooting for cause, not the subsequent or the successive. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Is there way to continue? Please. No. For if every productive cause imitates the one, but that immovably provides the unific underlying principle to those subsequent to self, then so also in a similar way, 
every productive cause will possess the cause of production. And certainly then, the one provides the underlying reality immovably. For if it were through motion, then motion will be in self. And by being moved, self will no longer be one. In consequence of being altered from the one. And if the motion subsists together with self, self will also be from the one, or self will also be from the one. And this either produces an infinite progression or the one will provide immovably. Thus, all that produces will imitate the one and the producing cause of wholes. For everywhere, out of that which is primary, originates that which is not primary. So, that which is productive of certain subsequent natures also originates from that which is productive of all. And all that is productive productive, productive, abides by itself. Accordingly then, subsequent natures are produced from themselves. Accordingly then, the productive causes abide undiminished, while those that are secondary are produced from themselves. For that which in any, is in any way diminished is unable to abide, such as it is. <clears throat> Tell us what you're seeing. Well, it establishes the first part of abiding. Yeah. Like what is, what, what abides, mm -hmm. what is the actual thing that's always abiding? And this cause that stays within itself. It doesn't actually go outside of itself to produce itself. It doesn't become less than itself at the same time. It allows something to remain. Good. If it changed, it would become other. So when you talk about the the things which are caused, how do they abide? Well, they must first have something which is abiding, mm -hmm. and that's the beginning. And, and in that sense, it's the one. Yeah. It's the one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Always the one. So if you ever get into that productive state, you're being mm -hmm. like the one. Questions? So by the time he gets to 35, though, he's saying that abiding is not sufficient, although it has that power, it requires more steps. It has to proceed and then revert. So by 35, then he adds two essential elements in that idea of abiding. Well, totally. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More. No. And, and the necessity of self, themselves, and things which follow, but primarily the self. Well said. Well said. I'll tell you what. Tell me a couple of propositions that you're familiar with that you'd like to see us go through and explore. Uh, All of them. Seven. Here, come on. Take a look. Uh, Seven, 165. All right, got one of them, 148. All right, let's get some more. Now, this is central because from it, a whole set of others radiate from it, just like you're seeing a connection between 24 and 35. I agree with you. <laughs> but is it possible that we might have to go step by step? <laughs> Which ones do you want to focus on the next time? Well, how about 32? That one I'd like 32, 33, 34. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the You've 
Okay. Yes, sir? I got to take this to work. I don't have one offhand. Uh, 49? 49? Yeah, well. 149? 149? Or 49? Oh, I mean, I like 142. I don't know. What is CXL2? You know, as a math teacher, you'd think I'm supposed to know. Uh, one, uh, 141. 142, actually. Oh, 142. 142? Or 18? Thirteen. Oh, <laughs> the magical thirteen. Okay. Next Friday, that's where we go. Where? Everybody got him. Playing lotto. Now, let's use Barbara's principle. Uh -oh. Huh? Don't just do it with these, do it with as many as you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair? That's also something you said about people. Yeah, I don't know whether it's a good suggestion, so I'm going to offer it What the heck? Um, Ken King gave a list of maybe six propositions that he thought showed prove the immortality of the soul. Yes. And that might be an interesting to take next time. I yeah. have a list here. Yeah, go ahead. Please read them out loud. Three and four. Okay, it gives proposition 83. 83. 44. Hold it. Uh, 15. 16. 16. 16. 1, 6. 1, 6. Uh, is that what you Yeah. Um, 43 and 46. 49 is well I'm sorry? I have five. Do you have five? Yeah, I have five. Yeah. 15. I'm so lucky. 49 is going out too. You need 15. Sorry, I'm sorry. 49. Oh. Okay, I look. 15 is in this list. I thought I read it. It's okay. All of these are Ken King's study on the nature of the soul. Yes. We'll do that as well. We'll start with that. How about it? 34. Did you say 34 or 44? No, I'll have to open it again. 44. Is it? Did I say 44? Yeah. Did you say immortality of the soul or nature of the soul? Immortality. She's saying 44. Okay. 83, 44, not 34. 16, 43, 46. Thank you. Sure. Well, the gentleman's adding that he sees that uh, 49, this gentleman is adding that he thinks 49 is key to that set. I haven't looked at that set in a long time, I have no idea. Perhaps as well, a shot we should think as well. Well, there are two ways according to which anything could not be eternal. One way which arises from its composition, and another way which arises from those that exist in another. However, that which is self-substantive self is not a composite, but simple. Nor is it in another, but in itself. Hence, it is eternal. Oh, sorry, Peter. There is one more besides that. 186. It was on another page completely. So I missed it. Okay, this is where we go. Fine, yeah. And then we'll do these. Huh? Thank you. Uh, hold it. Jeff is going to advance a theory of how it happens that often dreams follow a similar theme on many occasions, such as has happened tonight. The moon. Oh, uh, yeah. It's going to advance that tomorrow morning. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit about this last Saturday, didn't we? What, what's the conclusion we came to then? I think you said it here. Uh, 
Well, the dream is greater than the dreamer. Hmm. No. Let, let, me, let me get you some help. So, add to it. I was basically taking notes on my All right. <laughs> add to it. All right. What was it? See you next Friday. Until we have it tomorrow. <coughs> Gina, can you offer it? No, I'm at a meeting. Well, then I guess I have to. No, no I don't have to. I, I, I would like to. Okay. Okay. If, 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 okay. if, if the option of having to talk on Saturday means I get to offer it, okay. I am glad to do so. Saturday at David. I think all the dreams are alike to the that right there. I mean, I'm the second man. I mean, I have Thank you. Thank you.